like many capital cities around the world, Jakarta has its red light district. After midnight, sex workers ply their trade and pornography is easy to find. You land more to Indonesian? Yeah, what have you got? Indonesian. Indonesian four. One, Indonesian three. Right now, pornography and sex are the subject of intense public debate in Indonesia as one of the most controversial pieces of legislation ever seen here is considered by parliament. Known as the Anti-Pornography Bill, it has considerable political support, including from the Islamist Prosperous Justice Party. Hilman Roshad. Kita tahu bahwa pornografi ini adalah berbahaya. It's very dangerous. Dia adalah berbahaya bagi individu, bagi publik, bagi anak-anak, bagi remaja dan seterusnya. Satu hal itu. Kemudian yang kedua adalah realitas bahwa ternyata pornografi di Indonesia itu menyebar begitu bebas. The bill regulates the distribution of pornography and much more potentially changing the lives of all Indonesian women. Well, the main problem is that it's not only regulate the pornography, it's regulate the way we um, behave, it's regulate the way we dress, it's regulate the way we um, conduct things. <laughs> Activist Yeni Rosa Damiante is part of a broad coalition opposing the bill because of its attempts to regulate public morality, such as banning kissing in public and revealing clothes. It said that um, it's, uh, it's considered as a, a criminal um, offence if you wear uh, something that show your navel, your tie, um, part of your breast or you know so it's uh, it means that we cannot even wear um, like short when we are doing uh, when we are jogging for example in the morning if I wear a um, mini skirt or a skirt that higher than my knee for example the the fine will be about 200 million rupees up to 1 billion rupees so it's very high and um, it and, and I can be imprisoned for about about four years uh, just because of that. I mean that's even higher for um, many corruption case or rape, for example. Activists like Yeni have lobbied Parliament extensively against the bill. Uh, kami dari dari perempuan juga merasa sangat tersinggung nih Pak ya, karena semangat dari undang-undang ini ini menempatkan perempuan itu sebagai pihak yang bertanggung jawab terhadap kerusakan moral bangsa. Parliamentarians looking at the bill say they're now considering a second draft, but their new definition of pornography is still extremely wide. It's anything that arouses sexual desire. Yang disebut dengan apa namanya pornografi, karya manusia yang dalam bentuk materi pornografis, ya, dalam bentuk gambar, sketsa, ilustrasi, foto, tulisan. Suara, bunyi, gambar bergerak, animasi, kartun, syair, percakapan melalui media komunikasi dan atau pertunjukan di muka umum yang membangkitkan hasrat seksual. Hilman Roshad, if popular Indonesian performer Inul, known for her erotic dancing, would be banned if the legislation passed. Uh, boleh jadi, boleh jadi. Tergantung nanti definisinya kayak gimana. Nah, kalau misalnya itu adalah di situ ada unsur pornografi dalam pengertian taruhlah koitus misalnya atau atau yang menggambarkan hal tersebut menunjukkan persetuju, persetubuhan itu menjadi hal yang terlarang. Tetapi kalau mau menari silakan saja. Kalau tidak ada urusan, tidak ada dalam tarian itu ada hal-hal yang berkaitan dengan pornografi ya tidak terlarang, bukan sesuatu yang terlarang. 
At the headquarters of the Islamic Defenders Front, members are leafing through a Playboy magazine. This radical Islamic group is a frontline supporter of the bill. Nah, lantas ini beritanya, saya dengarkan beritanya beredar di Jakarta. Membuktikan kebenaran ini, saya cari di pinggir jalan. Ketemu tadi. Ketemu kaget saya, saya bukan usah mencari. Dia lihat kok ada playboy, berarti dia jual bebas. Bukan usah saya mencari, begitu. Public morality has long been an obsession of the Islamic Defenders Front. They're notorious for their self-styled vigilante raids on nightclubs and bars. In their fight to support the anti-pornography bill, they've been accused by women's groups of harassment and intimidation. Their leader, Habib Rizik, who's been jailed for inciting hatred, says opponents of the bill are really out to subvert Indonesian culture. Oh, memang jadi ada kelompok-kelompok tertentu berupaya untuk menggagalkan RUU APP tersebut dengan mengatasnamakan kebebasan dan hak asasi manusia. Itu tadi yang saya katakan. Kelompok ini berupaya untuk mewesternisasi budaya Indonesia dengan mengatasnamakan lebih liberalisasi kebudayaan dengan mengatasnamakan kebebasan. Nah, sementara kami melihat bahwa upaya untuk melibarilisasi daripada kebudayaan Indonesia itu merupakan satu upaya yang sangat berbahaya. Habib Rizik is coming to speak at a mosque in Jakarta. Also here is another Islamic civilian militia group that's fighting to have the bill passed, the Batawi Brotherhood Forum. This group, with their matching leather jackets, has conducted actions such as besieging the house of pop star Inul. Their leader, Fadloli El Muhia, is clearly not averse to making threats. These hardline Islamic groups see the anti-pornography bill as a vehicle for achieving their moral aims. As protests against the bill have vividly displayed, the Indonesian archipelago incorporates many cultures and religions. Opponents of the bill are gravely concerned it's an attempt to enforce Sharia or Islamic religious law upon the whole country. The former First Lady, Sinta Nuria Wahid, 
says the bill poses a grave danger to the official state philosophy of Panchasila that promotes diversity. While his party has supported Sharia law in the past, Hilman Roishad denies the anti-pornography bill is about introducing Islamic law but says that Islam should influence law in Indonesia. Harus difahami ini adalah negara Indonesia. Mayoritas penduduknya adalah Muslim. Konstitusi, our constitution mengatakan bahwa kita didasarkan kepada ketuhanan yang Mesa. Keyakinan akan adanya kebenaran agama. Karena itu ketika kemudian kita membuat aturan dan kemudian agama menjadi sebuah pertimbangan, sah. Apalagi dalam dunia demokrasi kan, seperti sekarang ini, sah. There is undoubtedly a push from some conservative and hardline Islamic groups to introduce Islamic style laws into secular Indonesia. Across the country, around 20 local government areas have already introduced bylaws inspired by Sharia law. For example, making headscarves compulsory for women and banning alcohol consumption and immodest clothing. Here in a satellite city of Jakarta called Tangerang, the local mayor, who's a member of an Islamist party, has introduced laws prohibiting alcohol and prostitution. The new law on prostitution allows women to be arrested on suspicion alone. Critics say it's designed to restrict the activities of all women. Basically, the law in Tangerang actually is also something like a curfew for women because um, any women can be sus uh, suspected as a prostitute if they um, walk alone or walk uh, not without any male family members with them after 9 o'clock in the evening. Lilis Lindawati is one woman who's felt the full impact of these new laws. In February this year, she was waiting at a bus stop in Tangerang at night when local police stopped her and accused her of being a sex worker. I'm not a PSK, I said, I'm going to go to the work of my job, I'm going to go to work. Tapi kan saya bukan PSK pak, saya bilang itu saya ibu rumah tangga, punya suami, punya anak, tapi dia nggak percaya juga pak. Lila says she's too scared to leave the house much now, but agrees to come with us from her village to the city of Tangerang to show us what happened to her that night. Cukup kali ya maaf pak Dedi. Jadi istilahnya pas kena kejadian itu kan saya shock ya, sampai saya nggak pernah kemana-mana gitu ya. Mau ke Tangerang aja nih ya, istilahnya ya. Mau istilahnya belanja atau beli apa, nggak berani sekarang, nggak siang, nggak sore, takut gitu. Jadi terima gitu. As we're driving, we come across the local public order police out on patrol. It's their job to implement the new law and find suspected sex workers. By chance, this is the same patrol that picked up Lilis. Lilis was arrested at the bus stop with more than 10 other women. After being bundled into the police van, she was taken to a holding cell. The next day, Lilis was taken here to the forecourt outside the local mayor's office. Without a lawyer and before a crowd of local people, she faced trial. <laughs> Lilis will only look at the scene of her public humiliation from the safety of the car. <laughs> Lilis 
datang da dia memperlihatkan gitu ya nah kita itu ditertawakan pokoknya diketawakan dicemohan macam-macam deh ya nah pokoknya saya malu dah di situ ya dikira makan around 13 other women were also tried that day under the same circumstances as Lilis. Looking like a show trial, with no sign of a defence lawyer, woman after woman was found guilty of prostitution. When it was Lilis's turn, the judge asked to see in her handbag. Waktu itu kan diperiksa, mau diperiksa tas saya kan, diperiksa tas ada bedak sama lipstick. Dia bilang, ini ada bedak sama lipstick, katanya ibu kerja, bohong nih ibu nggak kerja. Bisa aja ibu ngaku-ngaku kerja, tak tahu apa katanya, nah, apa sih PSK itu, PSK katanya gitu ya, PSK dia bilang. Saya bilang, enggak uh, Pak Hakim maaf nih, saya tuh bawa bedak lipstick, emang saya kalau setiap kerja bawa. Kan kalau di sana kan, kalau pulang kerja kan kita kerapihan kan, mau pulang kan harus dandan lagi kan, masa nggak boleh pakai bedak kayak lipstick. Terus karena dari ini katanya alasan udah saya jawab gitu yang masalah lipstik sama bedak ya dari alis katanya. Nah alis saya nih itu alisnya aja kelihatan kalau memang ibu bukan PSK masa alisnya begitu. Based on the fact she was out at night and her incriminating makeup, Lilis was found guilty, unable to pay the fine of around 50 Australian dollars. She spent the next three nights in prison. Dozens of women have been arrested in Tangerang since the new laws came into effect. Local human rights workers say some women were likely to be sex workers but others were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The thing be, be, uh, behind that uh, law to eradicate that prostitution is um, based on, um, on, on, on a rigid uh, interpretation of morality in Islam. For example, like um, uh, only bad women uh, out of the house after um, 9 p.m. without any male family members. Tangerang's mayor refused to talk to Dateline, though a spokesman says the laws are not influenced by Sharia or Islamic law. Since her arrest, Lilis has taken to wearing a Muslim headscarf, called the Jilbab. Based on her experience, she thinks in Tangerang now, it's a safer option. Masa yang pakai jilbab nggak dibawa, nggak ditangkap, yang pada nggak pakai ginian ditangkap, yang beli rambutan aja dibawa itu barangan. Pas saya naik dibawa, ada lagi dibawa lagi nih tangkap yang bawa rambutan ibu-ibu. Nggak pakai jilbab, tapi yang berdiri lama pakai jilbab. Nggak ditangkap heran itu. Maka saya sekarang, nelah, terima saya pakai jilbab aja, nelah saya takut saya gitu. There is a serious challenge underway to the secular nature of Indonesian society. More than 50 members of parliament have signed a letter calling on the president to overrule all local regulations based on Islamic law. Former president and one-time leader of Indonesia's largest Muslim organization, Abdul Rahman Wahid, says the Sharia-inspired laws are actually illegal. Do you think, for example, the laws in, in Tangerang do violate the constitution? Yes. I, in what way? Because uh, they uh, condone only one type of, uh, you know, of uh, 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 law or, or morality. 
while uh, in essence our Pancasila and our constitution said that uh, we should be uh, multicultural. Has the, the current president been strong enough on this issue, do you think? Do you think? Oh, no, no. We are of the same similar opinions, but he doesn't have the courage to carry out the, 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 the laws or regulations. <laughs> As to the fate of the contentious anti-pornography bill, it looks like it will pass through Parliament with amendments in the next few weeks. Just who'll be dancing in the street once it does remains to be seen. <laughs>